Marie. Can we give it up for her again? This is incredible. I'm so happy about this thing. I'm really happy to be here. And you guys saw our beautiful posters. Do you see them downtown? Did anyone come here just because they saw a poster? I would be so happy. Yes! <laughs> Me and Swervy put them downtown. We spent like an hour. I know that's that, not as long as time as I thought. I, was about to, I thought I was going to say three hours. We only spent one hour doing it. Um, she thought it'd be really funny if a British couple were walking by and saw Fanny and giggled because that's, you know, what they call vagina. <laughs> and I just imagine this old British couple being like, Fanny on a poster downtown in the middle of the day. Gregory, come over and see this. And he's like, Fanny on a poster? That's preposterous. It's the middle of the day. Everyone from the UK sounds like John Cleese, and you cannot convince me otherwise. <laughs> um, I used to work at Chapters. I think I look like I used to work at Chapters. <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to aggressively let you know that I know how to read with these glasses. Like, I am literate. I can read pages. Um, and you're not allowed to read on the job, which I think is pretty hypocritical. Like, I think I got hired on these glasses alone. So, uh, I worked in the kids section, though, and I was caught reading a book once called What's Wrong With My Body <laughs> in the adolescent section. I was 21, and it was open to the page on how to insert a tampon. <laughs> and my male boss comes up from, from behind me, and he's like, Katie, you're not allowed to read on the... <laughs> You're not allowed to read the job, Katie. And I never looked him in the eye for the year that I worked there since. Like, we never crossed eyes. Um, one of my other favorite things about working at Chapters is I used to take people's emails at the counter. I know that sounds really weird, but a few years ago, and even, you know, 10 years ago, emails were a really personal thing. Does anyone remember their first email, and was it funny? Yeah. yeah. Hey, someone shout out, like, their funny email. Bob and Bobula. What? It was Wap and Bobula. Wap and Bobula. Anyone else? Scuba diving llama. Oh my god. <laughs> right? Like, they were just this weird assortment. It was like word association. You just type things out and you're like, guess this is my email now. And, uh, but you know, something's got a little personal. Like, if you told me your email was daddy's little girl xoxo at hotmail.com, like, that's personal. I didn't need to know that your dad wasn't around when you were a kid, you know? <laughs> Too sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I love now that we're kind of more worried about meeting people, like what they're like online. Uh, you know, like a few years ago, you would, you would be worried about meeting a person that you met online in person, right? But there were some red flags there, right? Like if you met a guy named Rodney on Plenty of Fish, you knew that he only had his third grade education and four kids he didn't know about, you know? <laughs> But now it's like, I worry how I'm going to date, how they're going to perceive themselves online, you know? You don't know what people are sharing. And a friend of mine actually broke up with a guy because um, he didn't use, like, the Apple or Android emojis. He would just use his own, which, one, red flag, they're there to use, okay? <laughs> and second of all, he would add a little nose in there, you know? It was like semicolon, dash, and parenthesis, right? And she told me she broke up with him over that. And I was like, dude, that's ridiculous. Throw away your phone, delete your number. He's a sociopath. Whoever has time to write in the dash and the emoticon, what else do they have time to do? Kill people? Like, that is way too crazy, dude. I do not trust people who have noses in their emoticons. I'm sorry. They were meant to be noseless. That's just a fact. <laughs> Um, I also really appreciated the old couples that would come in and give me their emails. They'd be like, yeah, that's Pam and Doug from Carbonier NL at simpatico.nf.ca. <laughs> I was like, wow, that is specific. Are you the only Pam and Doug in Carbonier? No, they were not. Sure enough, different couple next week. Yeah, that's Pam and Doug from Carbonier NL1 at simpatico.nf.ca. I was like, damn. You had to put a number in there, and they're like, yes, it was taken by our neighbors, Pam and Doug. <laughs> and then, you know, sure enough, a few weeks later, a different couple, Pam and Doug. I'm like, all right, I know this. Pam and Doug from Carboner NL2 at simpatico.nf.ca. And they were like, no, it's Pam and Doug from Carboner NL. We love our grandchildren so much at simpatico.nf.ca. I was like, I know that's too many characters. I know that's too many. You know, it kind of reminds me of those signs you see around the bay that say, uh, Nan and Pops, hugs and kisses, sleepovers. You guys seen those? One time I saw one that just said Pops, and it just said kisses. And there were two other blank slats of wood where you're supposed to fill stuff in. It was like a choose your own adventure, you know? And I did not see that adventure going very well, you know? 
Uh, guys, by, for, by far the worst email I've ever gotten. It even feels disgusting to say. Uh, the man approached the cash licking his lips, so I already know that something was going on, right? If anyone walks toward you, like, mm, you're like, nope, nope. But I could not escape. I was behind the cash. And uh, so I asked for his email, and he leans over, and he goes, yeah, that's uh, Freddy's Slippery Fingers oh. at Hotmail.com. I was like, um, what? He's like, F-R-E-D. I was like, no, no, no. I heard it. I heard it. And then he passes me his visa, and on the visa it says Fred Finger, and I'm like, oh, Slippery's just your middle name. I'm so sorry. That's on me. I, I judged you. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> The visa was slimy though, so. Uh, um, I'm really lucky because I grew up in a house where my mom was like a third wave feminist. It was sick, right? Like she uh, uh, like made an organization in her university where she would like have, you know, it was like feminists and they would, and this was in the 80s, and they'd walk, you know, women home on campus so they were safe. It was a super cool initiative, right? But sometimes I think my mom's feminism hasn't really translated into a new era, you know? And uh, the other day she's like, Katie, women just don't know how to parallel park. And I was like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know as a feminist you should be saying that. And she's like, I'm going to teach a course for feminists, for women, to teach them how to parallel park. And I'm like, I think at this point it's just reverse feminism, mom. <laughs> and it's like, the only reason I know is because of the camera in the back of my car. Like, I would be gone without that, okay? So unless you want to put cameras on everyone's car and that's what you want to call your feminist, you know, parallel parking course, then go ahead, right? Um, but I'm a feminist. I love being a feminist. I love shows like these and seeing everyone out here. It's really great. I did do one really unfeministic thing in my life, and that was uh, starting a rap video. <laughs> yeah, me, me, Chapters Girl, right? Like, I'm not your first choice, right? Um, I did it when I was 20 or 21 in, in university. Uh, I did it for my drug dealer because at the time I really thought he was the only place I could get weed, right? Where now I'm on Water Street, I throw a stone and I hit like five dispensaries, right? Like if only times were easier then. And so he asked me my roommate to be in this rap video uh, that he was producing and uh, we w were like, man, are we gonna lose our dealer? Like we gotta do this, right? So his premise was that the two of us would wear um, stocking caps over our faces and we would pull his friend in a rickshaw. Does anyone know what a rickshaw is? <laughs> like, I, there's no other way to, I can describe it than like, mm, you know, like, it's that guy pulling stuff. We were going to wear, uh, yeah, pantyhose over our head, pull this guy in a rickshaw, and um, it was going to be something about like mixing codeine and cough syrup. I don't know, something about that. <laughs> And anyway, so we agree to do it because we're very nervous about losing our dealer, but we know this doesn't feel right, you know? We know it doesn't feel right to have two women pulling a man with just a fur coat on and nothing on underneath in a rickshaw. Like, we know this is not feministic, right? We have the inkling, but we're like, we don't want to lose the dealer, you know? So um, I was like, oh, we can't wear pantyhose, dude. People are still going to see our faces. We need to be totally covered. I, I cannot have people see me in this video. So I go out and I buy like a ski mask and I cut a hole out the top for my ponytail. It actually looked really sick. I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I'm ready for a rap video. And then my friend buys this like Hannibal Lecter type mask, right? And we're like, good. We vaguely recognize each other. We are ready to shoot a rap video. All good, right? So we go to meet up with our drug dealer and he's like a five foot three man with very evident short man syndrome, right? He like walks in and he's like, yo ladies, what's up? All right, I'm pull a rickshaw. And uh, he's like, I want, us, I want us to come out of a mansion. This was in Halifax at the time. So we go in the middle of the day to the nicest neighborhood in Halifax, and he's just like, yeah, all right, let's go here. I was like, do you have permission? He's like, we don't need permission for this video. I was like, pretty sure we do. So we're at this mansion in this like U-shaped driveway. Remember what I'm wearing, a ski mask. My friend is wearing a Hannibal Lecter mask, and we're going to pull a rickshaw with some dude in a fur coat and shorts and nothing else, right? It's a guy walking his dog, and I'm like, hi right like what do i do with this you know and uh so you know he's like oh yeah we want him coming out of the house like it was just an absolute and i was and all i was thinking was like you can't lose your dealer you cannot lose your dealer you cannot fucking lose your dealer um 
and they're pulling the guy out, right? And, but like, uh, you know, and so they're and they're they're so cheap at this time that their friend has like a sunfire with a sunroof, and he's holding the camera. And the friend's driving out of this. There's a sunfire driving out of this like massive house, right? And so it's either like a coke house or we are not into anything good. So he's driving out, cameras on the top, filming us, right? That video never came to fruition. I don't know where it is. If anyone knows, I will literally pay them $10,000 so I can burn it. I went to a liberal arts college. That would have ruined me. That absolutely would have ruined me, right? But I did learn something very important that day. Um, I am a stoner first and a feminist second. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can be both, and it's amazing. Thanks so much, guys. My name is Katie Thompson.